Okay, so let's talk about 6.4. This section is going to discuss U substitution with the fundamental theorem of calculus. So you will have two options, okay? So when you integrate more complicated expressions, remember we still do need to use U substitution anytime there was a quantity, all right? So um, same idea that we did with indefinite integrals. But the options are, because we're using a U variable, remember that's like a dummy variable, just so we can integrate, our original limits are X values. So you have two choices. You can do your, your, your U substitution and then plug X back in, U back in, and keep it as X, or you can change the X limits into U limits. So I'm going to show you both ways, okay? And then you honestly will decide. I'll tell you which one I'm more of a fan of when we get there. All right. So let's look at my first problem. Notice they're going to be the same, so we can kind of compare the strategies. So if we have um, 2x times the quantity cubed, we need to do a u substitution. So u is going to equal that inside. So du is equal to 2x dx. And let's just say I didn't have a 2 there, so I'm just used to matching it up. Now, technically, I don't have to do this, but on this problem. So this is u. x dx is 1 half du. So then we end up with, we've got the 1 half times 2 cancels. And I still have my integral here because I have not integrated. We would get u cubed du. So, so far, this is not any different than when we had indefinite integrals on u substitution. So, um, now, technically, these are x limits, okay? So, I can integrate and get u to the fourth divided by 4. Um, and I'm going to do this kind of in the process, but once I've integrated, I want to plug my u back in. So we would get x squared plus 1 to the 4th all over 4, okay? And so if I plug u back in, I'm now in terms of x, and so I've got from 2 to 0 because these were x limits. So then we do substitute 2 minus substitute 0. So what do we get? 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 to the 4th, which is 625 to the 4th, minus 0. So 0 squared is 0, plus 1 is 1. 1 to the 4th is 1. 1 over 4. And so we end up with 624 divided by 4, which is 312 divided by 2, which is 156. Yep. So 156. Now, the other process, let me kind of show you the difference. So we're still going to need to do a U substitution. So du is equal to 2x dx, and I could move the 2 if I needed to. Okay, so this matches up. Uh, the x dx is 1 half du. So those still cancel, and I still end up with u cubed du. But if these are x limits, it really is awkward to me on that last problem. You could probably tell that I don't like writing a u with x limits still here without like making some sort of note to the reader. But what I can do is if x is equal to 2, I can substitute that in and I can find the u limit. So 
2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1 is now a 5. And these are u limits, okay? So then if I plug in my lower limit of x equals 0, 0 squared plus 1 is 1. And we really wouldn't write the u there. I'm just writing that for you. So now I have u limits and a u function. So to me, everything matches and it makes me feel more comfortable. <laughs> so we're going to integrate with the power rule from 5 to 1. Now, there's no need to plug u back in. Because these are in terms of u limits, I plug them in here. So function of 5 minus my plug in 1. So 5 to the 4th, plug in 1, 1 fourth, and I still get the same thing. Sorry, 625, I already did it in my head, is 624 over 4, which we now know is 156. So there's only one slight difference, and it really has to do with, do you want to keep everything in terms of you? Or if I plug everything back in, it kind of makes it look a little harder and sometimes there's more errors this way. So this is my preferred just because I think it actually makes the substitution process simpler and it reduces student errors. Okay. I also do like it because all the notation matches and that makes my math heart happy. So <laughs> um, take it for what you want. You are seriously welcome to do whichever one you prefer. Um, as long as you show your work, I can find your error, okay? All right, but I am going to continue using my second strategy, okay? Um, you're welcome to confirm these on the calculator using your graph and that second calculate integral feature number seven. All right, so let's, we're going to now mix them all up. So let's see, I've got a root x squared, so let's try use substitution as our denominator. You're still going to have to play around with this sometimes. That's why we did unit five on indefinite integral rules to help you get better. So 2x and I don't want the two. Remember, you cannot divide by a variable. So match everything up. I know this seems silly, but it really does help. So 1 half du so we end up with u to the negative one half, one half, and I have it integrated, du. So I do change my limits. So I take root five and I plug it in here. We'll have to either do this now or later. I'd rather just do it now. So root five squared is five. Five plus four is now nine. Plug in zero, zero squared plus four. And so now my u limits are four and nine. See, I don't write u equals, you just write that. So now we'll integrate. If we add 1 and multiply by the reciprocal, I still have this 1 half in front. And we're going from 9 to 4. So those cancel. I want to do f of 9 minus f of 4. So remember, that's square root. So root 9 minus root which is 3 minus 2. There you go. Most of these answers will be nice answers um, or fractions. There's lots of fraction integral rules because remember, these are curves. So it's really hard to get it to be an integer value, okay, for the integral. <laughs> All right, so this one, I'm still going to keep these together. Um, but I have a sine times cosine, and there isn't a derivative that's sine times cosine. I can't integrate these separately because it's a product, so we do need to pick a u substitution. The good thing is, is you can pick either one of these. So I'm just going to pick u equals sine. And so du equals um, cosine. Now, this one is kind of awkward, though, because this is being added. When I go to match these up, I know this is u, but then I need cosine x dx. This addition really is attached, 
So we are going to have to think of this as separate. Okay. Um, it's not always clear, so that's why I leave it together until I'm kind of forced to split them up. So then this now can become just du. All right, so this is kind of going to leave two different parts, and it's always good to show this too. That's why I only have three examples, because they're three very different examples. So when you integrate one, you're, remember, these are x values. So we're integrating this with respect to x. So I just get x, and I want to go from pi over 6 to 0. So really I'm doing f of pi over 6 minus f of 0. And I just continue with this part of it. We'll get to the pink later. And I'm plugging that in. So I get pi over 6 minus 0, which is just pi over 6. Okay, and that's this whole part right here. That's done. Now, I'm going to keep it in red. We're going to add on this. So this integral was really u du, and I'm going to change my limits. So I need to figure out, well, what is the sine of pi over 6? You're never going to avoid that. So um, 30, 60, we've got 1, root 3, and 2. Sine is so, so opposite over hypotenuse and pi over 6 is 30. So the opposite is 1, the hypotenuse is 2. So my upper limit is 1 half. My lower limit when I plug in 0, so the sine of 0 is 0. And so now these are u limits, okay? So we're doing these separately. So these were x limits, but my functions in terms of x. And these are u limits, but my functions in terms of u. So I can integrate. So u over 2 from 1 half to 0. So I'm going to plug in f of 1 half minus f of 0. So I get 1 half squared is 1 fourth divided by 2 is 1 eighth minus 0 squared is 0. So I get plus 1 eighth. Now, there's no need to get a common denominator. If this was multiple choice, maybe they did. Um, so if we make this 24, I might see 4 pi plus 3 all over 24. Now, is that better? No. So just be flexible. What you won't see are decimal answers. Like this would be a non-calculator. Because you can do integrals on the calculator, this would never show up on a multiple choice calculator portion. All right, example four, I kind of threw this in here. I think we're at the level where I can add extra things. So remember, x is our variable. So what that means is that a is a number and b is a number. So treat them like that. We're not finding them, though. So we still want to do a u substitution. So u is typically going to be the inside. So ax squared plus b. So our derivative is going to still be a power derivative. So bring the 2 down in front, and it just gets multiplied. Power of 1. b is a number, like 10, so its derivative is 0. Now, I don't want the 2a there, so we can divide by that. So when we go to match this up, we get this is u, so u to the 1 half. Um, x dx is 1 over 2a du. Now, these are still x limits, so I'm still going to plug those in for x. So I would get a plus b on top, and if I plug in 0, I would just get b. So I'm going to go ahead and I just like to leave this out. So I'm going to integrate. I add 1, so 3 halves times 2 thirds from a plus b to b. So I'm really going to plug in a plus b minus f of b. This really makes sure your notation is clear.
I'm going to use a parenthesis. So a plus b is going to stay. So I got 2 thirds a plus b to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds, I plug in b, b to the 3 halves. Now, that's good. What they might do is they might just factor this out, this 2 thirds, because, well, that reduces. So you might see, so I'll say or, um, you might see 1 over 3a, and then you might just see this, a plus b minus b to the 3 halves. Okay? And they might just write that in the numerator. Who knows? Be flexible. Okay? Obviously, this looks simpler than that. But this really clarifies that you're doing the substitution, you're using parentheses, you know how to integrate when they add in these variables. So it does show up sometimes on uh, multiple choice a lot. All right, the next ideas are going to kind of be properties. So we don't know what the original function is. So remember, this is like my net area. You want to think of it that way. So overall, from 0 to 1, we get 6. From 0 to 2, from 0 to 2 of the same function, we get 4. So it's like, wait, if we went from 0 to 1 and we had 6, how can we go from 0 to 2 and get 4? So remember, it's signed area. So that will mean that maybe some of your integral values are negative. And then from 0 to 4, the overall integral value or signed areas have a net value of negative 8. So we've seen these properties before, and we're going to use them with u substitution and definite integrals. So remember, these are dummy variables, so don't get attached to the x, okay? So if I get f of 2x, you still do need to do a mini u substitution. So du is equal to 2, and 1 half du is equal to dx. So um, what these are doing is these are doing some different transformations of the functions, which do affect the integral values because you're shifting things, okay? So if I match this up, this is u. Um, dx is 1 half du. And then you do have to remember that these were the x dummy variables. So we can't have an x dummy variable with a u dummy function, kind of, if that makes sense. So we need to adjust. So I can plug in, if x is 2, I get 1 half, and then we've got, if x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and if x is 0, 2 times 0 is 0. And now these are u limits with a u function. So if you didn't do my second strategy on the last three problems or on your homework, you will need to understand the idea. That's why I show it. It's not because it's my favorite um, or preferred. It's because it's mandatory to understand that idea. So now because these are u limits in terms of u, that's what I mean by a dummy variable. These were x limits in terms of x. So all of the um, net areas will be equivalent now, okay? If I wouldn't have changed my limits though, it wouldn't work. So from zero to four of f of u, that's this. So we get negative eight times that one half. So overall we get negative four, okay? So let's try this. So u equals one half. So du is equal to a half dx and multiply by two. So I'm going to match it up. So that's u. dx is 2 du. And so I get 2 f of u du. So these were x limits, and we're going to plug them in. So a half of 2 is 1. Plug in 0. Half of 0 is 0. And now my limits match my function. I know it seems really odd, like, wait, 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 if that's x and this is u, but um, it does work. 
and we're given that is 6, so 2 times 6 is 12. All right, the last one, I know I did that substitution here, so I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite it, though, just to make it clear. So du equals 2 oops, dx, so 1 half du equals dx, so that's u, dx is 1 half du, and so we get 1 half f of u du. If x is 2, u is 4. If x is 1, u is 2. And so we want from 2 to 4. Now, we haven't really done that, but I think you can follow along. So what I do is I make like a little fake number line. I don't even make a graph. So we know there's some key points, and it's not equally divided. That's fine. Um, but we know from 0 to 1, overall, we get 6. From 0 to 2, overall, we get 4. And from 0 to 4, we get negative 8. So, um, so then I start thinking, well, let's go from 1 to 2. So... If we know, because I'm going to do it twice, they might have asked this. If I know this is 6, I can even set up an equation. And I could say, oh, 6 plus what gives me 4? Because that had to be the total. And so then, oh, I subtract 6, so x equals negative 2. And so that should make sense. I had to have a negative integral value if I got smaller. Okay? I don't need to know from 1 to 2, but we're going to use the same idea to get from 2 to 4. And some of you might be able to do this in your head. That's fine. So let's let this be y. So what we know is that this part from 0 to 2 is negative 2, plus from 2 to 4 is y, and that has to equal the total, which is negative 8. So basically what we're doing is we're saying from 0 to 2 plus 2 to 4, that equals the total, 0 to 4. And that was our integral properties that we learned. Okay, and so all we did was substitution, 0 to 2, oh, I wrote negative 2, oh, I'm glad I double checked that, so 0 to 2 is um, 4, from 2 to 4, that's what we don't know, and from 0 to 4, we know that that's negative 8, so if I solve, I subtract 4, and so y equals negative 12, I have too many numbers there going on. So, um, we get all of this is negative 12. So, half of negative 12 is negative 6. Okay, so on your student practice, you really can determine any strategy that you want. I try to throw in um, different functions, though. Um, and then, just as a reminder, because we're going to talk about even and odd, and I'll kind of go over this now, Remember, an even function, we did this in derivatives or, wait, no, no, limits. An even function means mathematically that. I think about the graph because we typically do this with um, properties. So if we have a graph, um, it means it's reflected about the y-axis. So if whatever's on the right side of the y-axis is the same as the left. And the odd function means it's the opposite. So if we were positive on the right, that means our integral on the left would be the opposite, negative, and vice versa. If it was negative, it would be positive. Even means positive and positive, or negative and negative. So then we're going to combine that idea with those properties, okay? Because they give you some values here. So I uh, give that a go. I don't really want to do too much more because I want to see if you can start combining some ideas. Um, but I know even and odd is something in Sec 3 that you probably touched for one day. And in this class, I reviewed it for like four minutes. Um, so if you do need more help, I'm going to be on the Zoom and I can send you some extra Zooms. But I just want to see what you'll come up with. Okay. All right. Luck.